Over my eight years with the CMA, I've really recognised how important the travelling stock reserve system is, not only in terms of grazing and um, drought reserve aspects, but also in terms of biodiversity and uh, connectivity values across the landscape. Where we've got largely cleared land for agriculture, there's a need to preserve those remnant patches that are left in the landscape for years to come, as they're the only remaining patches that are there. If we clear everything, we'll end up with a, a, a fairly monoculture type environment, which is not very good for resilience and future diversity within the landscape. My name's Jeff Minchin and I work for the Lachlan Catchment Management Authority. The TSAR project covers the whole of the catchment. We're working with three LHPA regions, the Tablelands, the Lachlan and also the Western LHPA region. And we're looking on these reserves to either see them maintaining their current values or improving in quality. My name's Craig Ridley. I'm a senior ranger with the Lachlan Livestock Health and Pest Authority based at Condoblin. I've been managing the travelling stock routes and reserves in the Condoblin region for the last 13 years. The history of the travelling stock routes and reserves go back nearly 150 years uh, when this country was being opened up by pastoralists. They formed a, a pathway to be able to get stock and supplies to and from the outlying stations because um, back then there was no mechanised transport of any sort so everything had to walk. They were a, a way of um, getting them to the railheads uh, to market and also moving them off to better pastures when times were dry here they could move them off and then they also started to form supply routes between developing towns as population spread and settlement increased and consequently you have a lot of reserves that were used for overnight stops with the horse and bullock teams uh, they had to have somewhere to camp and rest the animals the term long paddock was just referred to the fact that they are long lineal parcels of land stretching between point A and point B. When guys realised they didn't have enough feed on their home properties, they would put them onto the long paddock and go for a walk. Uh, quite often the early pastoralists had uh, other interests uh, in the Snowy Mountains. There was one property here that used to walk uh, stock to the Snowy Mountains and graze them in the summer and then walk them back out here in the winter and so therefore they got the best of both seasons and it, it let this this country here recover and vice versa in the in the snowies. The challenges for the future probably stem partly from the history in their past that there's a sort of a changing use of travelling stock reserves so in the past they've been predominantly for stock movement we're seeing a change where the community is getting more interested and wanting to utilise them for recreational purposes. That brings about challenges in terms of people wanting to come out and cut firewood, dump rubbish, remove soil, or um, in some cases even dump soil that's come out of their garden, which may introduce exotic uh, plant species. Also things like brick refuse, building materials and those types of things being dumped on travelling stock reserves, especially where you have charges on local rubbish tips and things like that. So we actually had an ecologist assess around 600 travelling stock reserves for their ecological values and their environmental values and also cultural heritage. Out of those 600 or so we ended up with a, a top of about 100 to 125. So then we went out with the LHPA rangers on that 125 and looked at what on ground works or projects we could put in place to help preserve their values. We're also looking at threatened species, endangered ecological communities and high conservation value vegetation. And this particular region around Condoblin is quite important in that we've got the Lachlan River channel not far from where we're sitting today and it forms a east-west corridor right across the catchment which is high value. In the, today's picture we've got an overcleared landscape and these reserves are essential for movement of particular species from west to east or north to south depending on seasons or um, migration. If we talk things like climate variability or climate change, some species may change their range over time. We we'll want to move along those reserves to maintain their diversity or maintain their species. Things like woodland birds, if the drier parts of our catchment become even drier we may see woodlands dissipate or die out in the western parts. So those particular species may need to move to the further east. We may also see our rangelands become even drier 
and the ability for species to maintain their populations in those very dry regions that will be more arid may need to move further east to just maintain population. We've tried to maintain the weeds, uh, not to overgraze too much uh, in places if avoidable, which mostly it is. Put in infrastructure to, to assist the movement of stock and which in turn sometimes helps with the, the vegetation retention. If you can move them away from a riverbank and put them onto a dam or a water trough, uh, it's probably a bit more acceptable in some places. But that comes at a high cost. Uh, and so we're always fighting this balance between core function of stock movement and, um, and refuge, environmental factors and funding and resources. So when the stock use the, the stock routes, they pay for the privilege. And we use that money then to maintain weeds and infrastructure and, and so it keeps the ball rolling. When we have good seasons, we don't have any stock out so we don't have any money coming in from that side of the thing. And so therefore the ratepayers' money goes to subsidising weed control and other works that we are obliged to do on the, on the stock routes. Weed species that impact on the TSRs in, in this region, up and down the Lachlan River here, African boxthorn are a major one. Galvanised burr, although it's a native, it is a recognised problem. And then you've got your summer burrs like Bathurst burr, Nagura burr, um, spiny burr grass. There are a few patches of that along the river on the sandy knolls that we're constantly monitoring and spraying. With the Condobolin region uh, and our work with Craig has been looking at um, some stewardship programs on particular reserves which have high values, some pest control, warren ripping, fox baiting, some pig control probably further in the west. We've also had a number of alternative water points put in place to protect some of the riparian values. Encouraging stock not to be watering on the riverbanks but to adjacent to the riverbanks. There's also the education of community around the values within the travelling stock reserves. We don't want to say no one can use them but what we, do, we want to say is if you do use them, use them responsibly. The public, they need to be aware that these are the last remnant vegetation corridors from days gone by. They form a network through a predominantly cleared landscape now that's used for farming, which is fine because we all have to eat. But they just have to, to understand that they're not free for all for them to just go and do what they like with. They have to be managed in a certain way. And so by all means go and enjoy them. But if you can cart stuff in, take it home with you. There's no need to leave rubbish behind. Uh, there's no need to cut down a tree just because you can and there are plenty of commercial firewood places to gain firewood to heat your home uh, rather than cutting down trees that would be great nesting sites for cockatoos, galahs, whatever, possums, all that. We like to see people use them but use them responsibly and not, you know, not wreck the joint basically. They're still very important in terms of drought refuge, flood refuge and fire refuge. March 12 months ago there was a lot of the, the reserves used around here when the floods came through. I think that that's the challenge for us is to find the balance between continuing to be able to use them for stock the way they have been and then manage it for the environmental outcomes into the future. The LHPA staff are very good at managing reserves and managing stock movements and weed control and those types of things and know their reserves very well and have that local knowledge. What the Lachlan CMA brings to the table is some knowledge around new ways of managing environment and managing for diversity on the reserves, but also being able to identify the Pacific values on particular reserves. So here we've got some mild woodland, which is a threatened community. So we can bring the identification of particular environmental assets and work with LHPA to just tweak how they're managing different things and bring some funds to the table to be able to have that change put in place. At the end of the day, it becomes a compromise of being able to balance what their needs are and what we would like to see, some of the outcomes that we're looking for in the reserves. Some increased diversity, increased range of some threatened species. I'm looking forward to some great results.